So the parts have arrived to do the bulkhead removal bar. Now, I'm getting pretty excited about this because I've read about these for a long time. And like I said, when I was doing a little intro about this 90 project, these were horrendously expensive at one point. But now, well, they're around about £100, £120. Um, comes with mounting brackets, assorted nuts and bolts. I see these are already pre-coated with the Loctite type stuff, so that's good. Um, these brackets, um, I, the welding doesn't look very, how do we say, British. It just looks Chinese. I'm sure it's alright, but mm, I'm not really sure about that. I might just go over them again with my welder. Anyway, um, it seems to be a full complete kit, and it comes with some instructions, which I'm just going to reach out over here. This is supposed to be a, an OEM kit. Hmm, I don't know about that. Might be. Uh, Brit part, part number DA1810. Um, the instructions are somewhat vague. You would have thought in this day and age you could have done it in colour. Just it gives you a bit more life. It's all very, very dark pictures. Um, now my concern was, do I have to take the roof off or not? And it seems by looking at this picture here, yes I have to take the roof off because I've got to put a bolt through that hole. Now, sometimes with instructions they say things that they don't really mean. So I'm going to have a go on your behalf to see if we really, really need to take the roof off. If we do, well it's going to be a, a, a sort of a longish job. But I'm here to see how it fits and I'm going to tell you the real way to do it. I'm not going to use my plasma cutter or anything like that but I'm going to show you a, a few little modifications that I would like to do to this and I thought about it last night and I think it's going to work so first of all I'm going to take the 90 outside and work outside today because if I have to take the roof off I can use my forklift so it's a nice sunny day or sunny morning should I say and we're going to get started to take this bulkhead out now I've got the instructions here and they are saying remove the roof and the side panels hmm well that's a bummer so what I'm going to do because this car needs painting I'm going to do something a little bit interesting I'm going to take the seat belts off because they're recommending you take the seat belts out I'll take them out of here as well to, so we could got plenty of room for cutting and grinding but what I'm going to do seeing I've got everything stripped down I'm going to just take that roof line of bolts out and also the, the fixings at the bottom and if I tip this with the forklift and I slack off the bolts here just slack them off I should be able to tip the roof over and the reason for that is everything's a bit messy at the moment because I'm doing some filler this is a really nice seal up here and I don't really want to break it if possible so what it'll entail is taking off this hinge here it will be supported down here, but that will be okay. So, there isn't that many bolts to undo. It's not too bad. And they're not rusty. So we'll take all these bolts out and see if we can get the sides out. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the forklift under here and see if we can get the, uh, and just lift it a bit, just tease it. Because I don't think we need to take it out fully. I don't think we need to take the roof off at all. Well, I do, but it's going to make life a lot easier and anything for a quiet life. So let's see. It's uh, now 10 to 9 in the morning. Let's see how we get on. So it's quarter past nine now. And, um, yeah, everything's going good. Um, I've got all the bolts out at the top. I've got all the bolts out at the bottom. I've taken off the top pins, the top nuts. Left that little bracket on because, look at this, that's just moving it with one hand. Oh, see? I can get that out of there, that's not a problem. So the next thing is we've got to put the forklift on just to um, help us. Now a good tip is, whenever you're taking things apart, just throw them in a plastic bag and try and put the nuts and bolts together wherever possible, like I did on this 
door hinge you know just put the bolts together and then you know where they go back together again so the next thing get the forklift out support this roof and let's get those panels out then we can start cutting so I used the forklift lifted up the roof just a little hair and then pulled out the side windows that was easy peasy really really easy so now we've got cracking good access to all the parts to drill and cut so let's get on with the next bit and we'll look at the instructions so we've said we've done that bit now it's on about marking out page one yeah it's very vague about where it marks from the inside rear tub on the back bulkhead there is a seam joint around each wheel arch mark a cut line above the seam around we each wheel arch I guess it must mean this bit now this is the bit I'm going to modify because I don't like this the idea that they're using so um, it looks like we're going to have to cut that piece out yeah look if they only did brighter coloured pictures look at this across at the top of the bulkhead there's a reinforcing strip riveted on there is a joint either side of this strip draw a vertical cut line from this to the top of the wheel arch must mean that bit there yeah there's the reinforcement strip that goes under there and so what they're saying now from behind the seats the vertical row of roots and join the same depending on what side you are mark a line to match the same position tip from the rear bulkhead measure from the center of it oh, look at that like a center point along the top bar of the bulkhead there are two reinforcement plate pieces riveted from underneath either side using a five millimeter drill or three eighths drill out these rivets to remove these pieces now that must be these pieces here so next thing I think we'll do is we'll take these bits out and we'll mark out where we're going to cut so I've got the reinforcement plates out there you go now instead of, instead of marking it, I can understand why you had to take that piece out because you've got to get a slitting wheel and cut straight down here um, because you can't get that piece out without the bulk, you can't get the whole bulkhead out at once so you're doing it in three pieces so that'll be one, two, three so what I did, instead of marking it all out and messing about I just ran a small drill close to the bottom there and you can see where it is there you see so there's a step there's a slight step of about well I don't know two two centimeters so I did that one there one there and one here and the reason for that is they're saying that you've got to fold this piece over so you don't catch yourself but like I say I'm going to do something a little bit different so the next thing is what I've noticed is we've got to take this little um, box thing off here drill those rivets out I'm going to take this off and serve this piece um, what else that's about it really yeah you should be able to chop that piece out and then we can work on uh, where else it is no look at that 20 to 10 not too bad look at this it's already out anyway there's only that reinforcement bar holding it in right let's get chopping Oh, so I'm going to use a, a very thin disc cutter, which I usually use. I'm not going to use my plasma, which would be really, really easy. But um, you haven't got a plasma, probably. So uh, I'm going to do it with the basic tools that you've got. Nearly 5 to 10, and it's out. Easy. Now, I cut this a little bit deeper, a bit shorter, because I need to put the... Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Always wear a dust mask when you're cutting aluminium, because it's nasty stuff. So I cut this a little bit proud because I want to put a flat wheel across there. The next bit is to get this bit out of here. See that bit? That's not too bad to do. It's a bit tricky. I'm not sure. There's a nasty little rivet up there we've got to knock out. Um, yeah. And we've got to cut across there, which is going to be quite difficult to do with the uh, grinder. Anyway, look at all that room though. Whoa, that's going to be brilliant. Now you can probably see my idea why I don't like this paddle here. What I'm going to do, I'm going to cut some angles 
and pop rivet them on the inside and then take these bits off. See what I mean? That's going to be a lot better and it'll look a bit more aesthetic than this great big flange sticking up. It's just that's just lazy. But we'll, uh, we'll continue and uh, cut off these other bits here and see how we get on. So what it's asking for now is to cut this last piece off here, this piece of metal, and then to file off the edges. Uh, also just under here there's two sp spot welds and there's a pop rivet there that's not quite easy to get to. And then we've got to cut along here and then we've got to cut that last piece off there. Now that's going to be tricky but not impossible. So let's cut these off first and it'll give us a bit more room. Getting this piece out under here is particularly difficult. There's a little pop rivet up there. So what I did was I got the, uh, the Dremel and I cut the head off the pop rivet and then I'm going to drill that out. I've countersunk these spot welds here so they should be ready to come out. This little thing here is a bugger to cut. I don't know how I'm going to cut that without going through the panel. Anyway, I think if I get this out, I might be able to fold this out of the way. So the next thing is to drill the rem remnants of that spot weld out. Yeah, drill the remnants of that spot uh, pop rivet out. Use my thin chisel to get and separate those panels and see if we can get that out. There must be an easier way. I'll, I'll think of something. Indeed there is an easier way, because once that's out, you can just, you, we can just fold this and it'll drop off. Wait a minute. Just like that. So, and you can see I've got some saw marks on there, but that's not too bad. So that's going to be strong enough. We'll just do the, the, the rest to the other side. Well, it's not too bad after all. So that's both sides out. That's in fact that's everything off. Um, well, like I say, I'm going to modify this bit. But first of all, we're going to put the bar in um, and follow those instructions. I think it's going to be quite easy now. Then I can get the vacuum cleaner out and tidy it all up. Hmm. Might have this finished for lunchtime. What time is it now? Twenty past ten. Hey. And I haven't even done one before. So let's follow the next step. Place the tubular pieces inside the vehicle to work out which way around the bars fit in place. Okay, by the looks of it though, the main bar fits with the legs sticking forward, so that should be easy to work out. And then it says, once you've worked out which side bar is taken, which is which, take the side bar from the opposite side and place it upside down on the side you are working to align with the 10 millimeter, ten and a half millimeter hole you have already drilled and align the outside of the cap in on the rear tub with the bracket. What on earth does that mean? So we've got to mark out some holes, in other words. Easy. So I'm beginning to work out why they said to drill that hole out here to 10mm, because what I've done is I've put a, a bolt in the bottom and using the opposite side, so this one goes on that side and this one goes on this side, you use this as a template to mark out the hole. So you do this parallel and then get your sharpie and mark it out. Now it's looking to me, it's looking to me as if those two brackets there line up here. Well, that would be jolly nice if it did because it saves putting these brackets on. Um, yeah there's something to look forward to. Now I had to bend these tabs down. I'm going to cut them off eventually. I'm going to just, I'll just do this as a dry run, just nut and bolt it together and then work on those bits this afternoon. But I want to see and get all the holes drilled and tapped so they all go back together. Um, yeah, so yeah, so what we have to do now is mark out these holes at the top. Um, yeah, quite easy. Yeah, not too bad at all. All right, in a minute. If you don't like dust, this is not the job for you. If you don't like getting your hands dirty or anything dirty, it is filthy. Now, with just a top tip. I've buffed, it, I've buffed off this um, edge here so it's flush, that's going to be nice. But when you're using your grinder, I'll just swap hands here. Start at this end, start at the uh, left hand end and work to the right. There isn't reason for that. Because if you start at this end, this lip here isn't held on to anything. So you'll, you'll bend it, you'll bend that lip down. Um, just, a, just a tip here, they don't tell you that in the book. 
So now I'm going to do a sort of a final assembly and have a look at then I'll sort of have a look at some of these welds because they're looking a bit shonky so I think I'll do them again or reinforce them a little bit anyway hmm I don't think this is made in the UK at all anyway we'll see so it does line up with the uh, holes for the seat belt that's brilliant so now all I've got to do is get another bolt for there and fasten that down that is going to be super strong yeah, there's nothing wrong with that um, I'll take back everything I said about those welds, they're not too bad. Well, they look a bit bad, but anyway, the next thing is to mark out these holes here. I've, I've, I've bolted it up, but the next thing is to bolt these, uh, drill these holes out, and then uh, we can take it to bits and then get it all, you know, a bit of paint on there or whatever, and it's going to be good. Yeah, I'm very pleased with that. Look at that, that is spectacular. Yep, just what Land Rover wanted they should have done this from day one well they did for the north american ones but no it's it's really worked out well i was quite surprised how it fitted a bit messy but uh yeah all in all not too bad so the next thing i've got to do i'm going to grab a bite of lunch now because now well it's quarter past 20 past uh, 11. um i'm going to make some brackets to go under here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to um put the sides back on temporarily and then I'm going to use the forklift and just lift up the back of the car and take the wheels off and work on this panel because what I'm going to do I'm going to cut this edge flush with the back panel here so there is a, a, a folded over lip and it's pop, pop riveted on but what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that off completely and put an um, like a 90 degree angle on the inside and then pop rivet it on both sides so you won't get any of that and when you car because you see when I'm going to carpet it it's going to be a bitch to carpet around there so um, that's going to be the next thing but all in all worked out really really nice so what I'll do is I'll finish off those little last little bits and um, we'll, we'll do a follow-up video later on this afternoon when I get those um, corners done so what I did was I bent uh, two little pieces of angle um, actually it was Land Rover floor so it's nice and thick uh, I held it in with a couple of tech screws so I know where the um, actual position is and it's nice and tight and then from this side I can put four screws in four pop rivets in there and there and the same and the other side so that's what I'm going to do next I'm going to put two pop rivets in there then take those screws out and then drill the holes for the um, pop rivets kind of easy same across here same across there and then we can cut this edge off easy so you can probably see here what I've done I used tech screws in the corners and I drilled them from underneath unfortunately I didn't get them quite exactly straight but well, that's close enough so tech screws in the corners there and there then I drew a line and put my rivets in underneath but while the tech screws so I riveted all the bottom lot in and then when the top was in when there was two tech screws in at the top here and here I then cut this down almost to the level because the angle where it goes in wait a minute can't get your pop rivet gun in because of the angle of this metal sticking up so I just trimmed it down so now it's held in place I'm just going to cut this corner off here same here and that should look really nice after that yeah and then now, now I've got to cut down here and do the same so you can see what I'm seeing how easy it is to carpet that instead of that ugly lip it does take a bit of time but it's only like a two inch wide strip of uh, aluminium bent at 90 degrees and 40 odd well I don't know what degrees that 60 degrees and it, and it worked out really really well so after that clean up and we're done great stuff so there you go it's done it's four o'clock I had an hour for lunch well an hour and a bit and uh, the biggest job was trimming these and fitting these angles under here that took a little bit of a while this afternoon 
But I think you agree, it looks a lot better. Once you get some carpet on there, it's going to look an awful lot better than those um, just lips, you know, sticking up. So, you, you know, you're not catching anything here. So let's have a look at it from the back. I've yet to put the windows in, but I was just blowing all the uh, dust out. So look at all that room you've got now. That's fantastic, look. That really is nice. Um, and it's strong as well because it picked up off the seatbelt mountings. I, I found another couple that, it, that didn't come with any seatbelt extra bolts. So I found a couple and I put some plastic caps on just to tidy it up a bit. So uh, the next thing is to put the sides back on, finish off the body and wait for the door skins to come. The bonnet, that's on its way. And uh, yeah. I'm very pleased. I mean, I could have done it a bit quicker if I'd not messed about with those corners. But I still think it was worth it. I really do. Um, and it is strong. It really is strong. I just hope the door's shut. I hope it hasn't pushed this panel out too much. But hey, we'll wait and see. Because there isn't any adjustment on it. I've noticed that. There's no adjustment. You know, there's, the, the bolts are sort of rigid. But it is well bolted to the, to the, uh, to the body. And like I say, now you've got lots of room. That's what you want in these little 90s. And again, in a 110. Superb. Hey, I wish I'd known about this years ago. I'd have put one in years ago. Oh well, never mind. Now you know. So if you like that, click like and subscribe and leave a comment. See what your thoughts are. I know a lot of you were sceptical about it, but I think it's brilliant. Alright, we'll talk to you later.